We're back for week six of the podcast, and today we have a very special guest joining us. This is Tommy Renucci from UMass Amherst. He's really interested in marathons, cooking, and a lot of different business ventures, including traveling. So we're here to learn from him. He recently finished a marathon up in Rome, so he gets after it every day, and we're really trying to follow his example. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. So happy to be here. Pumped to get talking about, you know, whatever you guys have in store. You guys are obviously an inspiration while what you guys are doing with inspire brand and just the podcast and everything so yeah glad to be here but um but yeah let's let's kick it off i guess yeah glad glad to here but before we start davis bought some inspire t-shirts heck yeah so it's just clean clean then that's what davis said davis says inspire america but we just want to make it broad inspire so whatever you're doing just do it and have a good time doing it so good after because when you wake up every morning and you're not sure do i really want to do this do it. Today we did a 15 mile run before this. Tommy led the charge. He's getting ready for a marathon again in a couple weeks potentially. He just finished another one. And so we've got a lot of big plans and we're excited to hear from him. All right, so we'll start off. Who are you, Tommy? Like what, what's, who's Tommy Renucci? Oh man, big question. No, that's good. Um, so I mean, yeah, I mean, just like what Davis was saying and we were kind of talking about this on the run earlier today. Um, you know, after college, we're just kind of, we're in a spot where we're trying to figure out, you know, what we want to do. Um, and just, I feel like a, a good mentality and you guys have that mentality too. It's just like staying after it um, in all aspects of like, not only with work, but on the outside of work. So outside of the nine to five, like staying after it with exercising, keeping your diet intact and just keeping, just keeping the pedal to the metal with that stuff. Um, so like I have, I have that big, big mindset there. Um, but yeah, I mean, beyond that, uh, a lot of my hobbies, I love cooking. I got into cooking during COVID a lot, uh, just because like there wasn't much to do, but just sitting around the house is a lot of, you know, just a lot of questionable things about going out. So a lot of time in the house, love cooking, um, one of my passions. So that's where I started Maso Cooks Out. Just, yep. um, you know, a lot of, a lot of friends and family are just like, oh, Tommy, you gotta, you gotta do something with cooking. Like you love it so much. So that kind of just inspired me right there. You know, I'll start on Instagram or something small. And I mean, that's all it really is. It's, it's kind of just a passion, something I keep up with. Um, any, you know, anytime, anytime I just have an interest to cook something, I'll try to get creative with stuff. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's just something to do. Like, it's like, I'm sure like you guys with, with work and Alan's on there, it's just another thing to keep you motivated and to keep you going. But yeah, so how did, how did you get into cooking? Because, I mean, Davis and I, we don't really cook that much. Yeah. Speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. No, Davis it up. Yeah, no, let's go. I wouldn't even consider Come that on. chefing it up. Like, Tommy, <laughs> Masso's Cook, like you said, it's on Instagram. We'll put it in the, in the description. Uh, but you have a pretty big following now. What is it, like 3,000, 2,000 followers? Yeah, it's like just under 3,000. Um, so, and like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing it to like grow followers or anything yeah. like that too much. It's more of just a place to express myself. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I'll see something and getting back to your question, on like where I started cooking and stuff. Like I, when I was younger, going up middle school, even like elementary school, whatever, I, I love the like food network and the travel channel. So like people I looked up to growing up, were like Jose Andreas, Anthony Bourdain, um, Andrew Zimmern, just guy guys. Theory. Guy Theory. A little bit, a little guy. Gordon theory. Ramsay. Yeah, Gordon Ramsay. He's not. Yeah, he's up there, but, but yeah, no, I love those guys who, who, weren't afraid to kind of leave their comfort zones in the in the chef and cooking world. Like, Anthony Bourdain, for example. Um, he he was a great inf- inspiration for me just because he was a guy that grew up in the in like the gritty chef environment. Um, not much more than that, and his writing career kind of took him to that start and a lot of people think that you know he was a great chef but it was really his writing and his journalism that got him to that fame um and yeah i mean just listening to him him speak the way he can explain a a different country and a a different cuisine and how that affects his life that inspired me growing up um you know like i remember talking to my middle school teachers and they thought it was funny that i watched like anthony bourdain because he's he's kind of a real like uh gritty irreverent guy um but yeah i mean so i i guess long story short I, like just watching tv got me into cooking and of course my family too are they um, big cooks 
yeah so like my mom cooks my dad's not a big cook like he, he can make cereal and stuff <laughs> like that but um but no yeah i mean my, my family my my um my extended family like just ha- holiday gatherings everyone's always cooking yeah. so, so that's traditional is now. that who you learn from or did you learn from the tv show like how did you st- like i'm not good at cooking but yeah. you have to learn somehow yeah so i did i did a lot of like self-taught um just through yeah through like watching tv and just like really s- just seeing food and seeing and kind of breaking it down in my mind like okay how did they take these ingredients and get it to look like this mm-hmm. and then kind of following along just doing like my own research into different recipes um i love food history because mm-hmm. that tells you a lot about how recipes come to be um like that the food history honestly is probably for me the biggest piece on how i learned to cook okay. just because you you learn the origins of ingredients where they come from their stories that they bring the people that are behind it like it tells this immense story that goes way beyond just a plate of pasta or something which is that's that's the biggest interesting thing to me I never uh, thought of it like that. I yeah, think cooking as a story. Dude, yeah. yeah. That's that's what I think when it all boils down to it, like I love seeing people's reaction when they try different food or something, but the big thing for me that gets me going is just learning about the history and the cast of a of a plate, you know. Um, because it, it does, it speaks volumes beyond just, just nutrition. That's really yeah. interesting because yeah. when we see the pictures of all the different dishes you're making, they truly are artworks in and of themselves. I appreciate that. And when we see them, it looks like it's a lot of Italian food. I know you have some heritage there. Is yeah. that your primary ground where you work with, or are you trying to look at different cultures and mix those in too? Yeah, that's a good question. So you definitely got that right. Like Italian's definitely my base, yeah. but people get people get this conception that Italian's this pretty straightforward cuisine, but yes. it's it's as multifaceted as cuisines across the world. You know, you go to southern Italy. You're cooking with olive oil, grains, so pastas, lots of seafood. But then you go to northern Italy, and you could, it's almost like German food because mm-hmm. there's a lot of rice up there, a lot of butter. Uh, so it's two completely different cuisines. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I'm always trying to switch in different types of, you know, just living in America. So yes. different types of ethnicities that we come across mm-hmm. here, um, you know, like just around Boston, there's so many different cultural backgrounds so there's a ton of different options for food yes. and getting creative with stuff so i'll always try to get creative with my stuff yeah. but i'd say at the center of it it's like that italian mediterranean vibe that's awesome yeah. so you have one go-to dish a special specialty if it's bottom of the ninth Ooh. and you have to hit a home run that you're bringing you out to bottom the- ninth i'm stepping yeah. up to the plate what am i cooking yeah. what are you oh, com- you're coming up to the plate what are you putting there like what's my favorite or like what i like cooking the best probably what you cook the best if you're if Anthony Bourdain is coming in, what are you going to cook for him to show <laughs> oh, that you're the real deal? Oh, man. I mean, I won't I won't get too complicated with it, but I, I love Ama Tricciana, which oh. is a Roman. It has Roman roots. Um, that's That'd be my go-to because it's like, for me, it balances everything. It's got a little bit of the red sauce. It's got like a little bit of the porky, kind of like the meat aspect of it. And then the fresh pecorino on top with some pepper. It's like. I love it. I love cooking it too. It's it's just something. Just the process of cooking. It's real. Like it just it just meshes everything together. It works out real nice. Yes. And so, if it's a Roman dish, does it go way back in history to the times of the emperors, or is it a more uh, modern dish that's come out? That's a good question too. So the Amatriciana, it's actually from a town called Amatrice, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of roman dishes and a lot of italian dishes in general have contested kind of arguable origins but that one that one stems back to a specific town um and like the whole the whole ingredient background of it so the guanciale is a it's pork cheek that's used in it so that's like from obviously local pigs that were in the area um and then tomato was just a very actually People, people think tomato, like back in Roman times, oh, Italy, but tomato was actually introduced to the old world from the new world after mm-hmm. Columbus and, you know, after the explorers went over there. So um, it's kind of strange to think about tomatoes were actually in America before they were in Italy. Ooh. Like you go way back. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of, a lot of like pizza, that's only the late 1800s where that came out. So a lot of the Italian dishes are 
a lot younger than you think. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. That's really cool. So those Roman gladiators weren't fueling up with pasta. They weren't eating sauce carbonara. No, nah, they were not. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's I guess awesome. another question for me is, like, this is your hobby right now, but you see it going far further than a hobby? Yeah, so that's something I've obviously contemplated a lot. Yeah. And, of course, I always joke with myself, like, I picked my passion's probably the one of the most cutthroat industries yeah. to get into. I know there's some type of stat where it's, like, 5% of restaurants actually make it. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic. I think right now where I'm at, I don't know if I'm ready to take that complete switch to be like, oh, let's, let me focus completely on, like, food and my, my culinary passion. Um, like, I still want to do, like, a lot of other things, and that's definitely an idea, though, that's kind of, no, I wouldn't say in the works, but it's definitely down the road. Yeah. I want to do something with cooking, for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because that is a huge risk. It is. Because if you go out, you can make it big, but like you said, at the same time, like, you can come crashing down. Yeah, and yeah. then you're at then you're at square one again, but. Yeah, yeah so especially coming off the pandemic, so many restaurants and just the industry yeah. in general having major challenges, but maybe there's an opportunity to rise from the ashes. Yeah, there always is, you know. So, hey, you never know. We'll see. Watch out. Maybe a Tommy Renucci restaurant chain coming in the yeah, future. Yeah, stay just, tuned, guys. Yeah, we'll see. Be ready. If you want to find <laughs> dining. I guess I have a tip because I, I would consider myself a beginner cook here and I don't know if anyone else is, but do you have any steps or advice for somebody that's just starting off in cooking? Yeah, I mean, I think the big, and this is like, this is something that's with everything, you know, just don't be scared to jump into it. Um, I know cooking can be a little daunting, but just start cooking for yourself. Like, look up a look up a recipe or go to Maso Toast. Like, <laughs> yeah, try, try one of mine. I put the steps by steps in the step by step in the caption. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, just don't be scared. Just, just look something up. Um, I mean, if there's a food that you like and you're like, Oh, I wish I could just whip this up by myself, like not have to go to a restaurant or buy it pre-made somewhere. Um, and you get that satisfaction that you made it too, yeah. which is awesome. And you know, everything that goes into it, which I mean, I know for you guys like diet and, focus yeah. on what you guys are putting into your body is huge so that's another big thing with cooking like you know everything that's going into your body which is um that's really important for me i know i so. guess one question to stem off that is because i cooked last semester which was the first time yeah how do you balance the time it takes for cooking mm -hmm. and cooking that's good true. meals because i found myself taking shortcuts just cooking up ground beef and rice because it was quick yeah it didn't taste it tasted all right but it wasn't quick i yeah. mean it didn't take that long right right yeah that is a balance so I've been, I've definitely been experimenting a lot, just working from home with yeah. like how to make the best stuff real quick. Um, breakfast is, breakfast is real easy with that stuff. Just yeah. like utilizing simple ingredients that have a lot of versatility and a lot of different um, uses. So like oats, bananas, kind of those breakfast staples, you can do a lot with that stuff. Um, and it's quick too. So um, like one of my go-tos and I, my sisters and some of my like other friends joke about it because I make pancakes every Friday. Yeah. Oh, so I call them Friday good. Stacks. Friday Stacks. Friday <laughs> Stacks. So like the the basis of the the recipe, all it is is I grind up oats. Okay. So I make a you know like a less processed oat flour. Yep. And then I mash a banana up, and then I do a cup of almond milk. So it's all plant based too, which is good for you know digestion. You're not using a lot of processed like carbohydrate, like all purpose flour or something like that. Um, and you just throw it on a blender and you can add, you know, you can add anything. You can add cinnamon, uh, blueberries, different things like that. You can get creative with that, with that, um, you know, the toppings and stuff. And I'll just throw those in. I throw in like scoop of uh, protein powder. I use like, I use a vegan pro, uh, pea protein powder okay. that I've been getting into. Um, so I throw that in, that adds a little flavor boost too. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that's just like an example of yeah, something that's quick and it's still really good. So yeah, it's all, yeah it sounds like you all got to, you just got to find what you like and then learn how to cook it quick and yeah, be healthy with it. Absolutely. And have that secret ingredient, that extra protein that's going to make that pancake a little bit better and get oh, yeah. to the top a little bit A faster. lot of people do that now, I realize. Like they put protein in oatmeal, they put protein in a bunch of different meals. Is yeah. That, is that new Smoothies. or is that people just... So, I mean... I would say that protein powder, like, I mean, protein powder has been around for a while, yeah. but the part that people have to be careful about is that a lot of different brands have 
different stuff in the breaking time. Yeah. So you got to be careful with fillers and different types of additives that brands are putting in. Yeah. Um, I stick to all organic plant-based proteins. Yep. So like a lot of a lot of pea protein, um, pumpkin seed protein for amino acids and um, different different micronutrients that they hold. Um, but yeah, I mean the 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 easiest way to think about it is how short the ingredient list, and the shorter it is, the better. Yeah. That's like the simple rule of thumb. And I mean, organic, organic is just just icing on the cake at that point. Yeah. Because um, I read Tom Brady's book. That's yeah. where it shine light on that because he was talking about how all like you said all these different ingredients that you don't know what it is yeah and then i bought his protein powder and it's like five ingredients it's also pea protein there you go so yeah. that's why i bought it yeah i mean simple simple don't over complicate with ingredients especially when it comes to that stuff i think that's huge yeah. do you take any other supplements no no other supplements um i have i have a real when it comes to nutrition i have a very kind of holistic mindset okay. on like fueling and just eating in general um predominantly it's plant-based so like during the week i try to stick almost all plant-based and then like on the weekends you know if i'm if i'm out at a restaurant or something sometimes it's really hard to not like you know not you don't want to be that guy that stands out like oh do you guys have a vegan option so like of course in those situations like whatever but um but yeah like i'll I'll try to stick at least like 80 percent plant-based diet um why is that like i so that's something i've been pretty interested in after it started actually our senior year yes. um just eating at hamp all the time and like, oh yeah i know shout out to hamp shout out yeah. to yes. tommy's a member of the hamp squad as well hamp all of fame right here from a couple of weeks hamp ago you know we'd be down there eating really healthy foods in a big variety yeah so thanks to umass dining again yeah shout out umass dining <laughs> like we we would spend three hours there easy sometimes just like we crush workouts or something and go there after class and just, just and chill. Yeah, talk. Pretty much like this. Yeah, literally just, just talking, like this. Maybe watching a Patriots game or something for a little yeah. bit and talking about life. Yeah. No, oh, but yeah, getting back to that, like I I started looking into more of like the plant based diets yeah. and stuff like that when I started hearing about just more of the health implications of um, like meat heavy diets. Okay. Um, and, you know, obviously there's pros and cons to it. And yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say, like, talk trash about eating meat because yeah. like, I still eat meat. I'm yeah. not against it or anything. But um, there's definitely a lot of health benefits longevity-wise for um, eating more eating more plant-based and, you know, emphasis on carbohydrates. We make carbs look, out, look like they're bad guys. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they're, like, they're the basic uh, fuel our body uses. So, um Wait, could you just, because I don't know, and we yeah. have a pretty big meat diet, what's, yeah. what are the, the cons to that? So, like, there's, there have been, like, a time tree, you've, like, heard of a lot of those documentaries that go into different, like, I know, Forks Over Knives is one that I watched, um, and then that Game Changers documentary oh, yeah. that talks about, like, the vegan super athletes, yeah. um, but, like, honestly, like, I can't bring up, like, a lot of, like, specific points, yeah. but I know, um, there's... There's a lot. There's a lot of stuff that goes into how when you're more when you still have meat and like animal products existing in your diet, like it's okay. But when it overtakes and consumes your plate, like a lot of our our foods in America are like if you think of like a hamburger, like like a huge like massive steak, like you're not having a lot of other stuff on the side to supplement that. Yeah. And a lot of times when you're getting when you're getting food from directly from the plant, when you think of it like okay, you're eating meat, meat's getting all their nutrients. So the cow's getting all their nutrients from the plant. Yeah. So all the nutrients that you're getting from that cow is just a secondary source of nutrients from that plant. So it's just even more broken down. Um, and yeah, there's a, there's a lot. I'm not, I'm not like an expert on that. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah, I just didn't know if you, you had like a few points off the top of your head, but yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Here's a comparison I've got. Yeah. So Brandon likes to say he's better than me at golfing, which oh, he is for okay. now, but I'll go out and I'll play with recycled golf balls. So usually the balls, the first times you hit them, they go farther. Yeah. But then if you use these recycled balls, they just don't go as far. So it's kind of like the nutrients aren't as powerful. That's a good. That's a good analogy. <laughs> to think of it because like, about a left field. Yeah. No, but it makes sense because think of us like training for running and stuff like that. When we're fueling with that recycled energy from yes. like meat and stuff, 
rather than just getting it from the source, like that complete full um, nutrient. I think uh, that's a cool, that's a good that's a cool analogy to use. Because like, just yeah, like, goes, yeah, I mean, there's, there's arguments too about um, plant proteins not being complete, but okay. there's plenty of sources of uh, plant protein that are complete. Like I know quinoa is a huge one yeah. that I eat a lot. The pea protein is complete. Which yeah. is why probably TB12 yeah. uses that one. Definitely. Pumpkin seed protein is a complete protein. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you can you can definitely find ways. If, if you're missing something from the animal diet, you can definitely find an alternative in the plant base for sure. By combining all of them. Yeah. That's really cool. And do you think it's helped your training? Because Tommy's run a couple marathons now. He's the one that really got us into looking at marathons and long distance yeah. running. And he did one senior year. So you have to thank him there. But how do you train and feel your body at the same time? And just what does that look like? Yeah, that's that's an awesome question. I definitely want to hear you guys too, because I know you guys have been crushing it. I want to hear about your guys' like food intakes and how you guys are feeling. But but yeah, I mean, I I haven't been training like I mean, I started training back in 2019 for my first marathon and been yeah. kind of running ever since. But um, but yeah, I mean, I've I've definitely feel like very like well energized, full of energy when I'm running. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me is just making sure the day before I get enough fuel in and, um, you know, getting good rest, but I have a question for you guys. Like I've been experimenting with intermittent fasting. I don't know about if you guys know anything about that, but like, what do you, what's your guys' take on that? I was going to ask you that question but, actually next. I was going to talk about intermittent fasting because oh, okay. you were talking about it on one of the runs. I like yeah. it. Yeah. But for everyone who doesn't really know, intermittent fasting is pretty much a diet plan where you eat two big meals a day and you don't start until later in the day. So you pretty much cut out breakfast, you eat a lunch sometime between maybe 11 in the morning and 1 in the afternoon, and then you eat a dinner that's still on the earlier side, probably somewhere around 6 o'clock at night. And the theory behind it is you eat in about an 8-hour time block and the rest of the time you burn off that fuel and by the time you get to the meal the next day, then you're fueling on an empty gas tank. So you're getting the most efficiency out of the food you're taking in. And I know I'm a similar diet scheme most of the time where usually I'll work out before I eat. A lot of times with work, if I'm starting work at 8 a.m. in the morning, I have to eat too early. So I have to start at like 7 a.m. But if it's a weekend like today, I mean, it's 12 o'clock and I haven't eaten any food yet because we went for a nice long run, just under two hours. And then still just using the regular energy that I have to burn it off. I like it a lot. Like you're saying, I still feel great now, not out of energy, but I'll probably just eat two bigger meals and then yeah. be ready for the next day. I mean, I wouldn't even consider that intermittent fasting. Yeah. The biggest thing, I mean, for I don't eat before I work out, especially running, because like digestive, like if you eat too much and you go run, it's it's not good. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you right now, if you're running 15 cramp, miles, yeah. do not eat before you run because you'll cramp. You'll have to go to the bathroom. It's, it's not good. So that's probably yeah. the main yeah. reason why you don't eat before you work out. That's another reason. And, yes. and also, you wake up so early. So, Davis wakes up at 5 a.m. He's not going to be eating breakfast before it works out. But Davis yeah. eats a ton. I, I mean, I've seen people do the intermittent fasting. I've never believed in it. I don't see it. I, I just try. I eat when I'm hungry. Yeah. And, uh, that's another thing. Like, just listen to your body. Yeah. That's, that's like. another good method. Right. And, like, I'm, I'm very similar to you, Dave. So, like, I, I haven't eaten yet today either. And that's yes. kind of what I do. So, even during the work week and the weekends, I probably won't eat my first meal till 11 noon wow. or so. Um, but then different to yours, I'll just eat kind of continuously for eight yeah, hours. Yeah. But then I still have that 16, 15, 16 hour time period where my body's just burning that fuel up. And then by the time morning comes and I'm working out, because I'm always working out in the morning like you yeah, guys too. Yeah. Um, so like you're just going off that fuel from the day before. And your body just learns to stay energized too. Like right now, I feel full energy. Yeah. I haven't probably eaten in 12, 13 hours, right? Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of it. Like, I'm a good proponent. I think for people that want to lose weight and they're comfortable getting into that kind of habit, yeah, yeah. I think that would be a good alternative rather than just, you know, trying to cut down calories yeah. and going that route. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, when you think of it, when your body's working out after 12 hours and not eating, it's burning those fat stores that your body has as fuel. Because yeah. it's like, all right, what else am I going to use? Yeah. So it, it goes after that fat next, after the carbohydrate. 
Yeah. We've seen the proof. I mean, some of our friends have lost 50 plus pounds oh, off yeah. intermittent fasting. It's unbelievable to see it. Yeah. In play. It's cool. It's, it's definitely interesting. I mean, and going back to like the vegan versus eating meat, it's, it's not like one, there's no secret sauce. Like there's not one way to do everything right. You know, it's for me, at least it's more just experimenting. Like the vegan mindset interests me. Um, there were obviously enough points to convince me that it was worth trying out. And like, I've, I've stuck with it. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a vegan because, like, I <laughs> definitely eat meat and, like, animal products, like, a lot. But, like, it's – I've definitely noticed over the past couple of years, I've probably limited my my meat from go, being 50% of my diet. It's probably 15% or so of my diet now, you know. That's so um, cool. Yeah. What are some of the staples? Because you were talking about carbs, and one of the foods that we both eat a lot in common is oatmeal. And then also grape nuts, which is great yeah. for endurance running. So those are two carb-heavy foods, uh, oats, and then a cereal. What do you like about those, and how much will you eat a day? Yeah, no, that's grape nuts. I'm telling yeah. you, that's, <laughs> grape nuts are the secret ingredient to every, like, any super athlete or whatever. I'm sure they're eating grape nuts because I'm trying to follow. Like, Davis was just telling me he had – five bowls of it the other day for lunch yeah that was lunch yesterday five bowls of grape nuts after biking for a while it just yeah. fuels you up and it fills you dying so you can get oxygen to your muscles yeah i mean that's the biggest thing um it's it's a fortified food so it's not organic um but like then again there's some give and take there because it has a lot of good essential nutrients especially for endurance training yes. um so it's one of those quick things that if you just throw it if you just throw a bowl together I think one a half cup of grape nuts has ninety percent of your daily value line. Spot on. I looked it up. Yeah, it's yes. like sixteen point two milligrams, which you need eighteen milligrams a day on average. But especially when you're training for running, biking, swimming, like you should be, you should be two hundred to three hundred percent of your daily value of iron intake. Um, but yeah, oats. Huge fan of oats. Um, you know, my my staple in the morning for breakfast is just oats, mash a banana. Um, scoop of that my my pea protein, pea protein powder in there. I'll throw like cinnamon in. I'll get creative and do a bunch of different stuff to mix it in fruits. Um, but yeah, that's like my go to every every morning, like eleven twelve o'clock. I'll have that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just going back to like getting enough nutrients and stuff. Oats is is such a complete source of not only carbohydrate. It's got a, a good amount of fat as far as grains go. Um, yeah, oats oats store a lot of fat. They have a good good amount of protein too. It's it's a it's an awesome food. So um, big fan of it. I know you are too. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah I eat them all the time. Crazy. Maybe a little yeah. bit too much, but it definitely gets the job done. And maybe that's the reason we're so fueled up after that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Like, do you eat any junk food? Like my Ooh. biggest thing is my sweet tooth is for ice cream, and oh, I yeah. find myself just eating half a quart. Just on a, on a night, just because I like it so much. Do yeah. you have anything like that, or do you stay away from all that type of food? So yeah, there's like there's give and take there. Like obviously, there's there's a time and place for for your yeah. junk food and just satisfying that sweet tooth. I'm the same way. Like, I ice cream is definitely my weakness, <laughs> but like there's ways around it. So my mom, she's always giving me a hard time. She's like, "You have such good willpower. Like just random nights of the week, I won't yeah. I won't have like dessert or whatever." Um, but like there's, there's, I'm sure you guys have heard of all those brands of ice cream that are going in that healthy direction. Yeah. So there's a brand that I've been, um, having, it's called Mix. Mix. Okay. Um, it's a Swedish ice cream. All right. So they, they do essentially the same process. Uh, they actually have a vegan version, which is pretty good. Right. I've had that a lot too. Um, but their process, they, and that's, it's the same with Halo Top and a lot of the low yeah, ice one. cream. Yeah. So. They essentially do the same process of making ice cream, except instead of using like heavy butter fat and cream to make the ice cream, they'll just do it with skim milk. Mm -hmm. um, and Nick actually has a, a technology that they started off in Europe and it uses, it sounds not good for you. It's like a modified vegetable oil, mm -hmm. but the way that they designed it or whatever it actually goes through your body without your body processing it too much. Okay. So you still get that texture and taste of like a full fat ice cream, but your body doesn't process it. And you know, it's early stages. So I'm not going to sit here and say like, it's, it's like a certified, like good thing. But from what they've tested so far, it's, 
um, from like a health perspective, it, it's it's good yeah. for you, you know. Um, but again, who knows? Like that could change. So, like something could come out. But yeah. I mean, yeah, that's no, that should be. In, we're just. Hey, maybe it's a possible investment idea because one of the big things about ice cream is if you look on the food label, it's high in saturated fats. Yeah. So they can get some unsaturated fats in there. Could be a game changer. Definitely. Definitely. And that's, I mean, yeah, that's the big thing because everyone's worried about like, oh, junk food. I don't want to, it's like all those excess empty calories, but there's definitely, that's something that I try to, you know, find out there's those balances of finding those foods that are still good for you, but kind of still passes yeah. being like sweet or junky or whatever. Um, the holistic approach. Yeah. That's, it's all about the, the holistic approach. Another thing TB12 was talking about. Yep. TB12 the goat. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I like there's, there's tons of foods out there. Like not only, not only good for you, but they taste good. And like, you can, yeah. you can sub them for different things. I love dates, super dates. sweet, just, full fiber so like they have that balance for you um but yeah like snacking on dates if you if you have a sweet craving yeah. those are good of course it's not like an oreo because nothing beats <laughs> that but no. natural sugars natural yeah. sugars heck when you're when you're running and training like crazy i mean i know a lot of those crazy endurance athletes they'll throw any type of junk yeah in just to get the high calorie yeah we talk about foods. michael phelps all the time. Yeah, because uh, he was. We don't know too much about, it, but I suppose he was just trying to eat calories as as, more, as many calories as he could when he was training. Yeah, I guess a, another stem off diet is your hydration. Are you yeah. drinking electrolytes, or are you just drinking water, and how much water? So yeah, no, good question there. Um, so yeah, hydration is so important. Like, I'll during the week, like I'll I'll just drink water, um, water and tea. I'm I'm weird. A lot of people think I'm weird for not drinking coffee during the week. Okay. I actually drink it just on the weekends or like weekends. Friday through Sunday, just as kind of like an enjoyment. Just I usually just drink it black. Okay. Um, but I mean diuretic. But again, you're not drinking too much of it, so it's not too much of a problem. But but yeah, mostly just water. Um, a lot of water. Again, tea before bed. Um, caffeine free, so like yeah. chamomile and herbal teas, stuff like that. Yeah, because yeah, there's a big emphasis on hydration now, especially yeah. the electrolytes. I, that's just what I've seen. Everyone's saying, oh, you need electrolytes, you need electrolytes, that. So I've been drinking a lot of TV light. I don't okay. know if you know what that stuff is. Yeah, I've heard of it for kids drinking it, like, after going out. Yeah. For, like, <laughs> uh, what's it called? Like, hangover cure. Yeah. Hydration when you need it. Has a of, <laughs> it has a ton of salt, electrolytes. I drink yeah. it after working out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that that's good. Like, that has all the, everything you need in it, I feel like. Like, after a workout, I would drink something like that. Like if it's around or whatever, um, but yeah, like I I like trying to find electrolytes in like foods too. So like bananas have a ton, just like fruits, yeah. all that stuff, um, yeah. nuts. Yes. Yeah. Because we just ran 15 miles, we didn't drink any water during the run or anything. Just yeah. when we got back, no water. No I find that crazy because when I go those longer distance, my body starts to break down. Yeah, and I need a fluid. Yes, and that, that's just me, I guess. Yeah, it's not that hot out today. Which That's true. Definitely helps. Yeah, the heat's a huge factor for running for me. Yeah. I mean, just personally, like if it's a hot day, that'll that'll cut me down. If it as opposed to if it's a day like this, overcast, yeah, it'll be pretty decent. Yeah. How'd you get into running? Because a lot of people don't like to get into like oh running this, running that. I have the background from cross country. Davis has always been a good runner. So, did you run back in the day? Yeah, no, so my dad's always been a huge runner, and I'd say that's, like, the root of my, like, running interest and everything, because him growing up, his, his like, athletics were, were around running. Okay. Like, growing, he grew up in Boston and Brighton, so mm -hmm. the big event for them, obviously, was the Boston Marathon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So something that he would do when he was around our age, he would just run the marathon. That was, like, the cool thing to do. Yeah. You know, you just yeah. go out, start, you take a bus out to Hawkington, I mean, back then it was nothing like it was now. Like they just give you a bib. They had tons of bandit runners that just <laughs> ran without bibs. Yeah. Um. So like he'd go out there with his buddies. They just they just start running. Like they didn't have any of these watches. Nothing. Yeah. Or, um. And he stuck with it. Like he would do five k's a ton. So I would do five k's growing up. Um. Just like with my dad, my sisters would do them sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we had that kind of running culture, I guess. Uh, nothing intense. But, um, but yeah, we definitely stepped it up a little bit in the past couple of years. Like I definitely got into it a lot more. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of how I started. I know, I mean, you you were nasty cross country in high school. Yeah. Like, I mean, I wouldn't say nasty, but I was yeah, pretty you good. Were. Yeah, cross, you're even faster than we are. Yeah, that's because you guys didn't do it back then. Yeah, yeah, we're busy yeah, playing football. Tommy's yeah, yeah. beating up on all the teams in high school oh, yeah. football. Oh yeah, <laughs> high school football. But yeah, right. I mean, yeah, I, I did in high school. I hated it. I hated running because it's such a mental strain. Yeah. In order to do well, you have to push yourself to your absolute limit. Or your body's telling you to stop. Or your mind's telling you to stop. At least, I was. And I was. I was mentally weak back then. Yeah. But I was. I was a kid. Right. And now, yeah. now we got the Inspire T-shirts. So I'm back at it. Yes. The first time I ran with Tommy, you remember that? Yeah. Right? Your senior oh, year. Oh yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know where we were. It's like, like Tom, November fourth, yeah. 2018. <laughs> no, the exact day. <laughs> Tommy's like, yeah, you. Anyone want to run ten miles? So I was like, sure. I hadn't run at all. I was at, I wasn't out of shape, but I had not run in shape. Tommy kicked my butt. We got up at like <laughs> oh, six a.m., wow. seven a.m. We got cranked out ten miles, and I just went back to my dorm and just passed out. Yeah. <laughs> No, that was good though. That was like that was that's all fine. it takes. Like it, it's all like and with everything in life, it's you're not just gonna segue into something and just be super comfortable. Yeah. Um. There's there's always gonna be that period of time where it's gonna be tough. I know it was for me. Like training for a marathon my senior year of college, that was that was pretty brutal. Cause yeah. like, you'd go out the night before and then the morning after it always be in the back of your head. Shoot, I gotta run twelve miles tomorrow. Yeah. Um. But like, and going back to what you were talking about with like the mental and liking what you're doing, yeah, I think it becomes so much easier when you find a way to do something in a way that you also enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I know training and running with you guys, like, I look forward to because I'm like, oh yeah, like, we'll just go it's crush so some miles. Fun. We'll have some conversations while we're running. It's like, fun to just talk about things. Yeah. See where life's going. Exactly. Like it's 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 almost like a social aspect. I look at it. Now. Yeah. Um, like when you guys run like by yourselves or whatever, do you guys do you guys use music? Like how do you guys stay motivated when you're running? For me, it, it depends. Like if I'm going more than ten miles, I guess if it's an easy run, I'll listen to music. If I'm doing a track workout, I won't. Yeah. But any run where I'm just going out cruising, I'll, I'll, I'll just listen to music. I think of it like in the car, I listen to music. So yeah. I'm just growing. So I might as well listen to turn on some country music and <laughs> yeah put my mind somewhere else i some people listen to podcasts i try to do that but it's hard for me to think about the podcast or the audiobook and then also tell my mind to get mentally tough at the same time i don't know it's hard for me to balance that so i just like music in the background yeah i don't really listen to music if i'm outside like we were today i mean i'm just cruising along having fun looking around you might run into a lot of people outside and you get to say hi and see what they're up to yeah. But if I'm on the treadmill, then I'll watch some TV shows, listen to music, and crank it up, and then really just get it going. Just try to stay occupied and in the same spot. Yeah, I remember you do that at UMass. You just, <laughs> yeah. you just rip out Netflix and just crank shows was, like three hours on the bike, just watching series. And yeah, stuff. and you just go through it. You can watch things. You can learn about the world around you. And just <laughs> catch up on some movies. Better than binge watching, I guess. You get exercise yeah, at the same hey. time. Still get to watch your shows, even if it's three hours, like Tommy's saying. Right. That's a good call. How bad? You got a you got a marathon coming up, right? Or is that a I'm thinking day? about it. About yeah, it? I'm thinking about it on Halloween, so we'll see. But uh, still in the books, we'll see. Yes, because I think one cool thing that you do with your marathons is you mix in another one of your passions of traveling. Yeah. Tommy has run a couple marathons over in Rome. I mean, even he doesn't even worry about the time difference. He just gets yeah. after it. He finishes that marathon, and so all other people might be sitting around saying, "Oh, the time's different." I, I mean, I would be probably off cycle, but Tommy just goes beast mode and cranks him out. <laughs> he finishes the marathon and gets himself a gelato. Absolutely, oh, yeah. <laughs> every time now you get to see the family over there as well. It sounds really cool. Yeah, you know that was that was an unbelievable experience. I mean, going over there, we actually have a relative. I was telling you earlier, yeah. he's seventy two. And he runs the Rome Marathon every year, and he's an absolute animal. Like, he was telling me so many cool life lessons and different tricks for running, and it, it really extended beyond running, just life in general. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was the the highlight of that trip was by far and none just seeing family and just talking with them, and, you know, just really pushing along our relationship because. It started about a couple couple years back where I, we first met them when I studied abroad. Yeah. Um, and it's just gotten better and better since. You know, we've grown closer, and it's just such a special thing that we have 
with them over there. But um, but yeah, the the mar- going over there running the marathon. It, there is this kind of cult following of people that run marathons and they use it as an excuse to travel. Yeah, um, so I was just, you know, shooting the breeze with a guy before the Rome marathon a couple of weeks ago. And he had a Boston jacket on from the Boston marathon. Yeah. He's like, Hey, you, you ran Boston. And he just starts talking. He's like, yeah, so I've, I ran Boston and many more. This is actually going to be my 485th marathon. Wow. And at first I'm like, is this guy for real? <laughs> but he kept talking. He's like, I don't work. I just run. Like he's at that stage in his life. He's probably, you know, financially free where he can do that. Um, he was older. I, I'd want to say in his sixties, but he said he was going to Berlin the next week to do a marathon there. Yeah. Um, and he said, all he does, he just travels and runs. And that's how he experiences life, which is pretty, pretty unbelievable. Yeah. You know, it's a cool way to live. Yeah. That's nice. It's a great way to see the city, too. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If you're running 26 miles around some of these cities, you're covering a lot of the streets. You're seeing maybe some back alleys and just hidden gems. Yeah, you can can uncover a whole city just in a few hours. It's it's pretty incredible. Yeah, some of the most historical ones. I mean, I can't imagine Rome Marathon. I mean, we're going past some of the oldest history that we can really see on display in an urban area. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Starts and ends at the Coliseum. So you're just running all through the different, um, you know, the different monuments and all the history of the city. And, you know, you're also running through newer parts of the city, too, that yep. uh, you, know, you wouldn't you wouldn't really expect them to look like. But it's all there. It's, you know, it's that's it's all part of the city. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I guess yeah. this is kind of off topic. But yeah. Are, are you a goal setter? Or, like, where do you see, how, how do you look in the future? Because we're all at that age where it's in your 20s, where it's so critical, in my opinion, of doing things and yeah. making sure you're on the right path. Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's awesome question, just because you're right, that's something that it's obvious on everyone's mind, like, what's next for me? Like, what am I, what am I striving to do? Um, and, you know, that can bring out a lot of stress in people, too. Yeah. I know it, it doesn't mean, like, you know, what am I going to be doing a year from now, three years from now? What, like, how am I going to get there if I even know what I'm doing? Yeah. Um, and a lot of times I don't know what I'm doing, but, um, the way I try to kind of find like solace and a kind of peace of mind with that is kind of just taking it easy and taking it day by day. Okay. Um, so I'll, you know, I'll have goals in the back of mind and things that I want to do mm-hmm. and I'll kind of just set out and see, you know, like what can I do today to get me closer to doing that? Even if it's just something small, like what, what small step can I take to get there? So say if it's a new job, like say you want to move around jobs or something like that. Okay, like what can I do right now to set up, you know, to get to that spot? Yeah. Like, it could be as simple as like just doing some research. Like what are other people doing? Like what, what industries do I like? What do, and I'm just using job as an example. Yeah, yeah it could be anything. It could be anything. Like um, travel. Yeah, so travel. you might want to go if you yeah. don't know. Yeah, that's a great one. So say, you know, we can use that as an example. Like, where do I want to go next in the world? Like, say I want to go to Australia. It's like, all right, what can I do today to kind of, like, get that going? Like, like I could read some articles on Sydney or what's going on in Melbourne. Brisbane. Yeah, or, yeah like, Brisbane. Like, what's how's the how's the barrier reef doing? Like, is it still dying day by day? Like, stuff like that. Like, just a little stuff. But, yeah, I think taking it day by day for me is it's just more underwhelming Mm -hmm. and it doesn't overwhelm you with trying to take on and like setting specific goals. Um, So like if I set a goal and I say, okay, by this time, like I I need to be doing this stuff like that stresses me out. Um, Like that's just my mindset though. A lot of people could look at that and be like, I need to have that like definite goal set. Um, But yeah, I mean just, you know, taking it easy, going with the flow, but still having that like passionate, like aggressiveness with trying to get there. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I feel like we all have similar mindsets. Like you were saying at the very beginning about pushing yourself, grinding. Where, where is the origin of your mindset? Was it from your family or is there people that you look up to that create this mindset or just natural? Uh, that's, yeah, man. I don't know. That's a good one. That's, <laughs> that's good, dude. You're question. asking a deep question. <laughs> Damn. Um, I think. I'm I'm a very like individual focus. So like of course there's tons of outside influences, yeah. but I think end of the day it boils down to you. Like so I think the the whole mindset thing is something that you have to develop and grow internally. Yeah. Um 
And of course, ex external forces are going to factor in. But yeah, end of the day, I think it's a, I think it's more of a, you know, just you yourself and or me myself and I yeah. is going to kind of push you as a mindset perspective. Were there a few catalyst points throughout your life that led you to this direction? Because for me, I mean, playing sports also creates that mindset because there's the competitive aspect where if you don't train in the off season, you can get cut from varsity. Um, but then also I started reading a lot and yeah. the books just opened my mind to, to all this stuff. Yeah. So I don't know if any, any books that you have, any recommendations? Cause I'm always looking for book recommendations. I know you have, I know you have some good book recommendations. Um, for me, you know, my reading recently, I was telling Davis reading a lot of like more travel okay. books and just, uh, like I was reading Anthony Bourdain. I'm, all, I'm always reading that. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta look this guy up. He's, I don't know he's who he good. Is. <laughs> he's good. He he's one of those guys where like if you don't know him, you don't know him. But if you know him, like he's just such a character and such a personality. Yeah. Um. So, uh, just a genius as far as how he writes and how he portrays himself in books and also with his voice. But, um. But yeah. So I was reading him recently. Um. I started poking out with David Goggins after okay. you were telling me. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. What, what what's your what's like your number one go like book recommendation right now? The right, I mean, I have a few, but the one okay. that completely changed my mindset was "Can't Hurt Me" by David yeah, Doggins. Yeah, okay. Because that just made me realize I can be working a lot harder than I was. I thought I was a hard worker, but I was really a hard worker in the moment. Yeah. Where that's not enough. You got to do it, like you said, day by day by day, because it just it just builds up, and that led to another book I just read recently called "Atomic Habits." Okay. I don't know if you've read that, but that's um, also about mindset just getting a little bit better each day uh, i just read a book called defining decade which is all about your 20s that was a great book who wrote that i, I believe her name is meg j she's a psychologist okay. but it talks about how your work your love life your fitness all in your 20s are wow. so important for your 30s and 40s and if you waste your 20s it's just going to create problems down the road yeah so you got to do it now so then in the future you can set up that life but you can still have fun, awesome. but it's just things to think about so you're not wasting time. And then you have to deal with um, later in your 30s or 40s. Yeah, I mean, and that's that stems right on what we were talking yeah. about, like just having those habits in place. And yeah. um, I know your dad was just telling us oh, earlier, like the people that are living these wicked long lives and have this immense longevity that, you know, they're 90 years old. And the, the big difference to... To go back to what he was talking about, those smaller Mediterranean towns, the the seven year olds are working just as hard as the twenty year olds, and it's really just a mindset thing, right? Because yeah. yeah. you can act like age is this inhibitor that's gonna deter you from doing your job and staying physical and you know all that, but if you just cut that out of your mindset and cut that out of your mentality, I mean, my great grandfather was ninety years old laying laying roof work which is That's one of the crazy. hardest jobs it's one of the most laborious jobs you can like right now i couldn't i couldn't do that you kidding me bring up some shame you could if you had i could, yeah, I could. That's the mindset you're right, right no i was just, just hyping up my great grandpa <laughs> i knew i could do that i was just hyping him up if you have to no, I mean, that's, yeah, it's... And we do this experiment one weekend, do a little no, home improvement no. project, lay some roof, get a workout in. Yeah, why not? I mean, working out is a strain, too. But, yeah, yeah it's mindset. It I agree is. with you 100%. Is, yeah. But it's also taking care of your body, too, in order to allow yourself to do those things. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's a holistic approach. But I, I agree. Mindset is huge. Mm -hmm. I wrote my senior thesis on mindset. Really? Yeah. Yep. What what did that go into? Like where did where'd you take that? Yeah, I mean it wasn't it wasn't the best because I mean writing a thesis paper is pretty hard. Yeah. And I just I like the idea of mindset, but then trying to find all the research to back it up. Okay. I found hard just because you have to put a ton of time. Yeah. But I kinda derived that if you have the right resources and then the right mindset, no matter where you're from, you can you can make it. Yeah. You just have to have the right amount of like the people surrounding you, that's a big thing, environment. Um, but even if you have nothing, if you have the right mindset, you, you can go places. Right. It, it comes down to mindset. But I say that, but it's like, where am I? So, I mean, I have all these. Path to it's a process, yeah, though. That's, the, that's part right of it. Right. You know, it's, it's all a process. Like, you're yeah. not just going to wake up one day and be like, oh, like, I'm where I'm at. Like, yeah. That's where luck gets factored in. Because, of course, there's luck. But I think with the whole mindset piece, like, you you have the ability to really do whatever you want to set your mind out to, yeah. and it, that's what that's all boils down to. Yes. We've had this debate though a lot mm -hmm. too because 
then it's like, where do genetics come into play? Yeah. And then where do mindset? Like people can say, yeah, if you put your mind to this, you can get it. But if you're, we always refer back to this, but if you're like five foot five, there's no way you're going to the NBA. Most likely. Yeah. Um, hey, tell that to yes, Monty Bogues. Monty yeah. Bogues. All right. Well, yeah, Nate Nate Robinson. Robinson. Yeah. But I guess you have to have a. It's realistic. just a lot smaller yeah, odds, you know. Small you're small odds stack. Yeah, but that brings up to what Steve brought up, which I still, is still in my head, is that when you're goal setting, you think, if I don't hit this goal, will I be happy with what I've done? If you don't hit this yeah. goal? Okay. Like, it, let's say, oh, I want to make it to the NBA. I mean, that's a, that's a hefty goal. But yeah. if, let's say, you get to that point where it's not going to happen and you look back on those 10 years you put into it and you're like, wow, I'm proud of what I did. It's okay that I didn't make it. Right. Uh, then it, that's a good goal. But if you look back and you're like, that was a waste of my time, then that probably wasn't the best goal. Yeah. I don't know. That's just how – that's what he said, man. That, Steve's got some good yeah, – he's, he's got, got some, some good, good stuff. He's got some good – yeah. <laughs> he, he, he's he got some stuff that he says where it's like, this kid, this kid's this kid got some stuff in that, in that brain. Like, yeah, you know? yeah, it just like, makes you think. He's, he's a smart kid, and he's got – he's definitely got his stuff together. He's got the sure. results to show it. Yeah. And I think, like Tommy's saying about longevity, you're never going to be like, oh, I'm done. I think until the yeah. day you die, you're just a natural human being, you're going to be looking for something more and something better every day. Yeah. yeah, that's the biggest thing is people say, oh, I'll be happy when I get here, like when this happens. But then you hear it time and time again. Like, I get to that highest point. And it's like, oh, that's it. That's why you got to enjoy the ride. Yeah. yeah. It's the most, like, Every the day. destination, it's a little cliche, but it's it's all about the journey, not when you arrive. Yeah. And for me personally with running, that was huge. So I remember training for my first marathon when we were at UMass. Yeah. Every time when I set out on a run, it was always like, oh, I, I can't wait to end. Yeah. But now I'm trying to change my mindset to be like, oh, I'm enjoying this run. Like, beautiful fall day, yeah, foliage is changing, like, gorgeous run just running out with some friends like what's better than that yeah on you said that on morning. the run today we yeah. we're in the middle of the fells yeah. in the woods and we're going over like a land bridge with water wow. on both sides what's trees. better than that you know yeah, i agree and you just because if you i don't I, i'm still tackling with the idea in my head but it's like college was so long ago but it seems like it was Ah, I mean, it was just two years yeah. ago for me, and, and you just uh, you were, than, no, I, I'm, I'm, ta- I'm talking about when you guys were there. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Like when we used to have these hand talks, where those were awesome, but they were so long ago. So like this moment, bad or good, is going to pass no matter what. So oh, you yeah. might as well enjoy it. Yeah, yeah we'll exactly. Make it fun. Exactly. You gotta you gotta enjoy everything, but again, like a little stoic mindset. I love stoicism. I yeah, I I that's another like mindset change I've made in the past few years, just not seeing anything as too good or too bad. Yep. Just having everything in that kind of picture of this is just life. And you can, you can look at stuff as bad or good, or you can just kind of look at it as th- that's how it is. Yeah. Um, and I think that that helps a lot with what you were talking about with, if I don't achieve my goal 10 years from now, yeah. will I look back and be disappointed? If you have that stoic mindset where you're not riding highs too high, yeah. or you're not going, you're not sulking on lows too much, and you're just in that equilibrium, that balance. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I think you'll be set. Yeah. Um, and like that goes for dieting too, like diet, running, anything. If, if you're like, if you're eating terribly too much, then like it's gonna show. But if you're balancing everything and having stuff in moderation. And, um, there's a lot to say about that whole yin and yang thing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's another it's another cool topic to to dive into for sure. That's good, uh, good stuff. What do we think? Do we have any big news? Anything we want to end it with, Tommy? You have any surprises? Any big plans? I have stuff in the works. Well, okay. We might have to. I don't know if I can announce just yet, but yeah, okay, there's okay. there's a plan. There's a plan in the works. You guys will. You guys will hopefully see it like in the next few months or so. But, Thank oh, you. Yeah, we might gosh. have to have Tommy on for part two after this. Yeah, big surprise. We might. Ago. We might. Well, and we can we can discuss that. Could be another topic because um, if all goes well with this, um, then yeah, that could be a cool topic to have on another podcast. Tommy's um, an absolute legend. Oh, yeah. We'll see if he gears up for the marathon in a couple of weeks. I might have to try it too. We'll see how everyone's feeling. He's got an ultra next week that we didn't <laughs> even bring up, but yeah. this kid's shooting to run fifty miles. Next week, which is yeah. just incredible. <laughs> we'll see how we talk about a run. mindset. Yes, yeah, we're gonna find out. It should be fun. Just go out there and push it, and then if I can recover in time, I'll rip the marathon with Tommy. Unbelievable. And if not, we'll all be at homecoming. 
Yeah, having, having some mass. beers, having a good time back yeah. at the old stomping grounds. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> get back yeah, maybe we'll have a ham talk from there. Yeah, well, I know. This is good. Yeah, we could. Yeah. <laughs> that could be a good little uh, ambiance, the, yeah. the dining hall for your podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Might be a little loud, but it's all right. We get that little room where it's kind of glass. Ah, and true, true. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Vent it out. Yeah. Well, that was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that was fun. That was more than awesome. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, guys. Let's go.